Three kings from Persian lands of old to Jordan follow the pointing star, and this the quest of the travelers three. shines out with a steadfast ray. The kings to Bethlehem make the way, and they in worship they bend the knee as Mary's child in her lap they see. Their royal Child of man, fall to Bethlehem. The kings are traveling, travel with them. The star of mercy, the star of grace, shall lead thy heart to its rest. Good incense, where thou canst not bring, offer thy words to the infant king. Offer thy heart. Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to you all to our worship from St. Michael and All Angels Church in Bassett. Wherever you are joining us from, you are very welcome to be with us this morning. Before we start worship, I just want to say a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you might want to get just a small bowl or glass of water ready for uh, later on in the service when we will be reaffirming our baptismal faith as we celebrate and remember the baptism of Christ. And the other thing is to say um, a welcome return to our virtual choir. They have been enjoying singing together in the building in person for quite a while and we have been enjoying that too. But it's no longer possible so they're back to singing at home to phones and tablets and whatever cameras that they have and then by some wonderful magic operated by some very hard-working people, we get to enjoy the fruits of their labour in our worship this morning. So thank you and uh, welcome back virtual choir. Um, and we hope it won't be too long before we are all singing together once again. So we are going to uh, begin our worship by singing the opening hymn when Jesus came to Jesus.
follow up on that, so we'll email it out to everyone. If you would like to uh, uh, get it from the website or join our mailing list, please let our office know. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. So a prayer for confession. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. And together. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. And may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Together we sing God's praise in the glory. Today's reading is taken from Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 to 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came down from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I do love baptism, don't you? They can often make me quite emotional, seeing the baby, child or adult, hearing the promises made either by representatives or by themselves, rejoicing in the power of the cross that saves us all, remembered through the words said. There are time to join in the rejoicing that another has been saved by God, his sacrifice made for all upon the cross for the freedom of all who declare he is God. Such happiness, so much rejoicing, and perhaps even a little relief too. I'll let you into a secret. When I was taking my mock O-level religious studies, yes, I am that old, and at my school, it wasn't even called a religious study, it was called a divinity. I got one question entirely wrong. Not so good for a future army teacher. One question was about the presentation of Jesus at the temple, and the next was about his baptism. In my mind, these were the same events, because I was confusing what happens at church with babies with what was happening with Jesus, and it was a complete embarrassment for me, and it's still one that I kind of wonder about even today. What can we learn about Jesus' baptism today that we can apply to our everyday lives and not confuse it with anything else? Let's look at our Gospel reading. Why was John in the wilderness? The wilderness had long been associated with the prophets, people sent by God to bring folk back to him by preaching and teaching about the need to return to him, about God's salvation plan to save his people if they will give him his rightful place as their God. So John is associating himself with that history. The wilderness is a place of repentance, of God's grace, of our deliverance. Okay, so why is John baptizing? The word means literally to dip the whole body, to plunge, to immerse. There was quite a history of baptizing in Judaism for those who were converted to Judaism from being Gentile. They would have to take a ritual bath in a special little pool called the mikveh at the synagogue, the bath where everything could be made ritually pure, from women once a month to implements to be used at the festival of Passover. It was the expectation that baptizing would cleanse you. John's baptism, though, was not like these. It was to be in response to repentance. It was a once and for all event that would purify from previous ways of living. And it wasn't just for Jews. All those wanted to become Jews. It's for both Jew and Gentile because, because everyone needs it now. You could say, being Jewish by background was no longer going to be enough. But even this, that wasn't going to be enough. John's baptism was declaring just how necessary this was. They needed to change their minds and behaviour through repentance, but to prepare themselves for the one who was coming, the one who was coming after him, the one who was so much more than he could ever be. So, we know why he was in the wilderness. 
We know why he was baptizing, but they asked him why in the river at Jordan. Remember the unusual way that John chose to live and dress, all that leather, locusts and honey? He chose to live subsistently from what he could find where he was. The image that he creates reminds us of Elijah who wore similar clothes, and who also was linked with the river Jordan when he parted the waters so he and Elisha could cross. And he also renewed the covenant between Israel and God at Mount Carmel, thundering with the truth that the people have strayed a long way from God. So the river Jordan location is calling people back, calling them to restoration. To get to the Jordan, people would have to leave their comfortable homes, either in Jerusalem or Judea, to find him. And it appears that men did. He must have become quite notorious, even history-making, in his words and actions, because Mark has it, the whole of the Judea countryside and all of Jerusalem came out to him. And so, we now get to the main event, to the reason why John was in the wilderness, baptising the river Jordan with water. But he tells very clearly, the one who follows him will baptise with the Holy Spirit. And after such grand prophetic symbolism associated with John, verse 9 very quietly introduces the person about whom it's really all been. About Jesus. It simply says, At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the River Jordan. Sounds so simple, so humdrum, go to the Jordan, be baptized. But it wasn't. This is no usual event. In anyone's judgment, this is quite remarkable. I say there are three remarkable things here. The heavens open, the spirit descends, and there was a heavenly voice. None of these usually happen, and certainly not to any of the others that John did baptized. The heavens open. The Greek word is schism, from which we get words like schism, which was the tearing apart of one part of the church from another. It's really quite a forceful word. It's not like the tearing of wrapping paper from a present to see what's inside. But there is hope and expectation in that. And maybe the father was just so excited that he couldn't contain himself any longer and had to reach down to the events in the river. But I'd say it was more than that. This was a cataclysmic demonstration of God's power. There have been other events where his power was so clearly obvious too. Think perhaps of the parting of the Red Sea, or the water coming out of the rock at Moray, both events to do with Moses. Or maybe in the New Testament, with only one other time when the temple curtain tore in two at the death of Jesus on the cross when this word was used. All are supernatural events, and when Jesus is involved, they are to reveal him as the Son of God. Now there was talk in Isaiah, one of the prophets, of the heavens being torn and the Messiah descending. The prophetic voice had been abandoned for hundreds of years, and the heavens had been sealed up. But now the heavens are opened once more, and we can expect the long-awaited return of God's Spirit. And this is what happens. In Mark's word, the Spirit descending on him like a dove. But apparently, the better translation for the Greek is that the Spirit was descending into him. It's a complete filling and equipping for the ministry by the Holy Spirit. Yet, there's the image of the dove, which feels quite soft and gentle. It's like gentle. This image is not often used by other biblical writers, but when it is, it's connected with the supernatural occurrence, think of the flood and Noah and the birds that sent from the park. So we have a dove, as something empirical, something observable to what was going on. And then we hear the voice from heaven 
the voice declares who Jesus is, not what he has become. He is my son, God's son. By being here, God shows obedience to the Father. The Father declares his love. No one else has ever had words said over them like these, and no one ever will. All of this shows us just how amazing this baptism was for Jesus. It was the keystone of his life and ministry, one to which he must refer to often, one that declares and shows what he's going to speak for and act for and do it all as God. So we've looked at why John, the wilderness, baptizing, baptizing and of Jordan. We've also looked at what might have been happening with the baptism of Jesus. But what can we learn from this for ourselves today? How does this build our faith and understanding of Christ? Well, Jesus needed baptism. The infilling of the Holy Spirit, the words of his Father over him, were utterly crucial setting him off on his ministry of word and deed that was to change the world. And we need it too, marking us out as his followers and equipping us with what we need for our lives following him. Jesus needed baptism. It begins his ministry in obedience and service. Identify himself with us as he is baptised by John, submitting himself to the awful duty that was to come. I wonder what God might be calling us to do differently this year. Will you be obedient? Will I be obedient as he was? Jesus needed baptism. The community of the Trinity is here. We have the voice of the Father. The Holy Spirit is a dove in celebration with the Son, a community of eternal, honouring love and service. We need baptism to live out our calling in the community where we are, in our families, in our places of work, in our city. In the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing that God loves us, and so knowing, having confidence that he will always be with us. Amen. Thank you, Sarah, for those excellent reflections on Jesus' baptism and indeed our own. So we're going to spend a bit of time um, affirming our own baptismal faith and if you've got a bowl or a glass of water with you then you're going to need that uh, very shortly. And we're going to say together uh, the Apostles' Creed, which is often used at baptisms, uh, but in a question and answer format. So my brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us renew our commitment to Jesus Christ. 
I answer the call of God my Creator. I trust in Jesus Christ as my Saviour. I seek new life from the Holy Spirit. Right, I'm going to put this down because I don't think I can juggle both at once. And uh, normally, of course, I'd be going around the church with some rosemary and flinging water at you in all sorts of directions. So I'll look forward to doing that uh, next year. But at the moment, you want to make a sign of the cross in water on your forehead. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptised into your name. Keep us faithful to our baptism and so make us ready for that day, when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sean Jordan, one of our church wardens, is going to lead us in our prayers for others. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, today we remember your baptism and the start of your ministry. Lord, as we look around the world, we see so much wrong that it really is in need of your ministry today. Lord, we pray for the situation in America and the handover of the presidency. Lord, we see discord, we see hatred, we see anger, we see lies, we see mistrust, we see fear. Lord, we ask that you will be in that situation, that you will be bringing your peace, your love, your truth. Amen. Lord, we're also in the middle of a pandemic. We see a health service that's overstretched. We see people dying. We see people getting sick. Lord, more than ever now, we ask for your presence amongst us. Lord, we ask that you'll be with the medics and the doctors and the key workers, that you'll be keeping them safe and you'll be blessing their work. Lord, we pray for a swift rollout of the vaccine, not just in the UK, but across the world. And we pray for justice in the way that is allocated. And we pray, Lord, for your um, peace and your love and your hope to all those who are struggling with lockdowns, all those who are struggling with the isolation, who can't meet with their friends, can't do what they need to do. Lord, we pray that in each family you will be in that situation and you'll be having your hand of love there. Lord, today, as we remember the start of your ministry, we also think about our ministry and what you've called us to. Lord, we ask that even at these difficult times, you'll be showing us the role that you want to play in bringing about your kingdom on earth. Lord, we ask that you'll be giving us your Holy Spirit to transform us and to guide us as we do the good works that you've prepared for us to walk into. Finally, Lord, we pray for those known to us who are sick at this time. We pray for Kelly, Kevin, Lucy, Marina, Tom, Lynn, Heather, Dorothy, Patrick, Luke, Rahelio, John, Vicky, Yvonne, Joan, Dennis, and Margaret. Lord, we ask that you will be with them and their families at this time. It will be bringing about your comfort, your healing, your love, and your peace to each one of them. Amen. Thank you, Sean. So we share God's peace uh, one with another. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Uh, so please do share peace um, with the, pe the people in your social bubble at home, but please also add a little notice um, on the, the speech underneath so that we can just share peace with each other.
So let's pray. Lord, accept your people's gifts, not gold, frankincense or myrrh, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You celebrated your new gift of baptism and signs and wonders at the Jordan. Your voice was heard from heaven to awaken faith and the presence among us of your word made flesh. Your spirit was seen as a dove, revealing Jesus as your servant and anointing him with the oil of gladness to preach the good news to the poor. Therefore, as we celebrate the union of earth and heaven, we rejoice to echo the song of the angels in heaven, forever praising you and singing. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Seeking the salvation of the world, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. So let's pray. Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth 
through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, so just a couple of notices here this morning. Uh, the first one is that um, morning and evening prayer are back. Uh, so you can always find us um, on Facebook Live, uh, Monday to Friday morning, and then some evenings for evening prayer. So do join us if you can do 9 o'clock and... 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock. 9 9 o'clock. There you go, that's an easy one to remember. Um, the second one, um, I would imagine um, that some people are really beginning to feel the, the, the pinch. Perhaps if they're on furlough again, maybe they've actually been made unemployed again, or you know, you, you, you know the, the scenario. Um, so we're asking to, for you to not forget, please, about Basics Bank and actually being able to make donations to Basics Bank. Um, you can do that directly, you can do that through a standing order, or you can do that by actually um, giving some food, uh, perhaps at Sainters or Waitrose or as or wherever you go shopping, but also at the rectory at the parish office. Um, let's just be thinking about those who are um, in that type of need amongst all the other needs that we have at this moment. But thank you. Great. Well, let's go with God's blessing today. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace, proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, glory thanks, thanks and praise, praise to God. Three kings from Persian lands of to Jordan fall on the pointing star, and this the quest of the travellers three. Oh,